Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are struggling to control the flow of radioactive water. The plant's operator says it will step up monitoring and control of the water leaks from storage tanks. Tokyo Electric Power Company says at least 300 tons of highly radioactive water has leaked from a storage tank into the ground. This is the worst leakage from a storage tank since the nuclear accident in March 2011. The tanks are surrounded by a 30 centimeter high concrete barrier, but the attached pipes were left open to drain away rainwater. Most of the contaminated water that leaked out is believed to have seeped underground. The water inside the tank was treated to reduce radioactive cesium, but TEPCO workers detected 100 millisieverts per hour of radiation near the surface of the leaked water. Only half an hour of exposure to this level of radiation is allowed in the course of a year. TEPCO officials stress there is no alternative to using the tanks. The tanks are easy to build, and in reality, more of these tanks must be used, or else there will be no place to store the tainted water. Workers have started to remove the remaining 700 tons of contaminated water from the tank to find out how the leak occurred. They are also examining soil and groundwater to see if the tainted water has flowed into the sea. The plant has seen a series of water leaks from tanks and other problems as it tries to clean up the accident caused by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Contaminated groundwater has also been found to be leaking into the sea. Utility officials need to come up with drastic steps to contain the radioactive water building up at the plant. Two weeks have passed since the Japanese government acknowledged that contaminated groundwater from the Fukushima nuclear plant might be leaking into the ocean. The government and the plant's operator are doing all they can to stop the leaks. They've announced a series of countermeasures. But experts warn that there are more pressing issues than just focusing on the groundwater. NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa has more. Crews at Kushima Daiichi have spent days working on their latest stopgap measure. They've been driving long pipes into the ground at the nuclear plant. They will use the pipes to pump up tons of radioactive groundwater before it reaches the ocean. But they admit They can't capture all of the tainted water. Two weeks ago, government officials said that hundreds of tons of groundwater flow from a mountain through the site every day. 400 tons filters into the reactor buildings. The officials estimate 300 tons makes its way through a contaminated area below, becomes radioactive. Then seeps into the ocean. Experts from the Nuclear Regulation Authority were firm about resolving the problem quickly. We must find a way to stop the groundwater from leaking into the ocean right away. Managers with Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, are planning a longer term measure. They are considering building a network of pipes around the plant and running coolant through it to freeze the soil. That, they say, would create a dam to block groundwater from reaching the contaminated area. But the project would take one to two years to complete. One expert is questioning the way the government and TEPCO have been handling the problem. Professor Jota Kanda has been studying the effects of radiation on the sea ever since the Fukushima accident. He says TEPCO slowed the response to the crisis by refusing to admit the leaks were even happening. We should have had discussions based on the fact that radioactive materials have been leaking from the plant. Kanda argues government statistics don't add up. He says a daily leakage of 300 tons doesn't explain the current levels of radiation in the water. According to my research, there are now three gigabecquerels of cesium 137 flowing into the port at Fukushima Daiichi every day. 
But for the 300 tons of groundwater to contain this much cesium-137, one liter of groundwater has to contain 10,000 becquerels of the radioactive isotope. Kanda's research and monitoring by TEPCO puts the amount of cesium-137 in the groundwater around the plant at several hundred becquerels per liter at most. He's concluded that radioactive isotope is finding another way to get into the ocean. He's calling on the government and TEPCO to identify contamination routes other than groundwater. If we focus on groundwater too much without contemplating other causes, the situation won't be resolved. There must be routes other than groundwater that are contaminating the ocean. So what we have to do now is consider all possibilities as we figure out a solution to the problem. Professor Kanda says the volume of radioactive particles discharged into the ocean is much smaller than the volume released immediately after the accident. But he says there may be other sources of tainted water stored up inside the plant's infrastructure. He says that water is highly contaminated, and if it gets into the ocean, it would again have a devastating impact. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World. Workers at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say a leakage of contaminated water may have gone undetected for some time. They say the storage tank doesn't have a water level gauge and their monitoring may not have been adequate. Workers found a puddle forming just outside a low wall surrounding tanks near reactor number four. They confirmed that one of the tanks lost more than 300 tons of water. The water contains high levels of radioactive substances. Officials of the Tokyo Electric Power Company say the tank has no water gauge. They say the workers didn't notice the leak in their daily inspections until they saw the puddle outside the barrier. Nuclear regulators have urged the utility to check 350 tanks of the same structure in the compound. If a leak occurred in one tank, we should assume that the same thing could happen at other tanks as well. The plant produces 400 tons of contaminated water every day. That's partly because groundwater is coming into the reactor building through cracks in the walls. The people who operate the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are wrestling with yet another challenge. They'd already confirmed that more than 300 tons of highly radioactive wastewater has leaked from a storage tank. And now they say it may have flowed into the Pacific Ocean. Workers with Tokyo Electric Power Company detected high levels of radiation inside a ditch. The ditch is about 50 meters from the leaking tank and it runs into the ocean. Workers have set up hundreds of tanks on a hillside near the reactors. They erected a low wall around the tanks. Still the water seeped out. Officials at Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority said they're considering raising their severity rating of the leak. They rated it as a level one incident on the international scale that runs from zero to seven. They're considering raising their assessment to level three for serious incidents. Previously, TEPCO officials had said it was unlikely that contaminated water was reaching the shore. They said the level of radioactive substances in the ocean was not as high as that on land. Officials at the International Atomic Energy Agency have been tracking developments at the plant. They've expressed their concerns. The people at the world's nuclear watchdog issued a statement saying they view the matter seriously and they're ready to provide assistance. They say Japanese authorities are supplying them with information and experts at the agency are following the issue closely. Now, TEPCO officials have struggled to stop the flow ever since the accident at the plant two years ago. They say radioactive strontium and cesium may have been leaking into the ocean since May 2011. TEPCO officials say 30 trillion becquerels of the radioactive materials may have flowed down to the shore. That's well beyond the in-house annual emission limit of 220 billion becquerels. Cesium and strontium are easily absorbed into soil, so the officials say it's hard to determine the exact amount that got out. 
the regulators appear to be losing patience. They've ordered TEPCO officials to do more to prevent any further leaks. The officials from the Nuclear Regulation Authority held an emergency meeting. One of the commissioners says he doubts the system in place now is capable of preventing more leaks. There's no record of monitoring? No, we didn't keep any. So you only have the memories of your workers. The regulators have instructed workers to install water level gauges on all storage tanks to warn of any possible leaks. And they asked the operators to consider storing the wastewater elsewhere. The commissioners plan to inspect the tanks on Friday. Workers at Japan's damaged nuclear plant are trying to make sure a leak of highly radioactive water is under control. The contaminated water escaped from a storage tank at Fukushima Daiichi. Inspectors are checking for leaks from other other tanks of the same design. They've detected spots of high radiation on the surfaces of two. Crews with plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company or TEPCO found more than 300 tons of tainted water had already escaped from one tank. They fear it may be making its way into the Pacific Ocean through a drainage system. So, we cannot deny the possibility of contaminated water leaking into the trenches around the tanks. Therefore, we cannot deny that contaminated water is reaching the ocean. Workers have transferred the remaining 700 tons of water to another container, but they have had to decontaminate the inside of the empty tank before conducting a full inspection. That could take several days. The tank is made of steel plates bolted together rather than welded. About 300 tanks of the same design contained highly radioactive water at the site. TEPCO workers are inspecting those tanks visually and measuring their radiation. They've found spots of high radiation on the seams of two tanks. The surfaces are dry and the water levels inside the tanks are normal. Workers are investigating whether the radiation shows water leaked in the past. Crews at the plant have been struggling to deal with contaminated water elsewhere on site. They're trying to stop hundreds of tons of tainted groundwater from flowing directly into the ocean every day. They say radioactive strontium and cesium may have been leaking into the ocean since May 2011. TEPCO officials say 30 trillion becquerels of the radioactive materials may have flowed down to the shore in that time. That's well beyond the in-house annual emission limit of 220 billion becquerels. Cesium and strontium are easily absorbed into soil, so the officials say it's hard to determine the exact amount that got out. Radioactive water has been building up every day at the plant since the accident. It's a growing problem. The short-term solution is storage. There is no long-term solution. NHK World's Noriko Okada walks us through the issue. Workers pour 100 tons of cooling water every day into the three reactors where the meltdown took place. The water comes into direct contact with molten fuel and becomes highly contaminated. Company officials initially thought they would be able to reuse the contaminated water to cool the reactors. But then they discovered groundwater was seeping into the reactor buildings. They had to adapt their plan to address the 400 tons of contaminated water being pumped out every day. The company installed devices that were supposed to filter out the majority of the radioactive substances from the water. But so far, cesium is the only substance they've been able to remove. The stored water remains highly contaminated with other materials. Company officials say they are now storing some 340,000 tons of contaminated water in 1,000 tanks. They plan to add more tanks to increase capacity to 700,000 tons. But the tanks have been hastily built. Experts have often pointed out how vulnerable they are to damage. And this isn't the first time leaks have been found. Company officials have reported another grim figure. 30 trillion becquerels of radionuclide substances have been discharged into the ocean since May 2011. They say 950 trillion becquerels of cesium had leaked into the ocean before that date. 
That means about one quadrillion becquerels of radionuclide have been discharged into the Pacific. One expert says stopping the flow of contaminated water isn't enough. He is calling for more research into its effect. Radioactive substances are accumulating in the seabed and are being consumed by fish. High levels of radiation have been detected in some of the fish. We don't know the mechanism or how it's happening. This is something we haven't fully investigated. Kanda says information about the contamination must be fully disclosed. He says that's the only way to allay growing fear and distrust in Japan and around the world. Noriko Okada, NHK World. An official with Japan's nuclear regulator has criticized managers of the damaged plant in Fukushima and told them to ask for help if they need it. Toyoshi Fuketa visited the facility as workers there scramble to deal with leaks of highly radioactive water. Fuketa inspected the site where 300 tons of tainted water seeped from a storage tank. Crews with plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company detected the leak on Monday. They've been checking about 350 tanks of the same design to make sure no other water is getting out. Fuketa criticized TEPCO for not considering the possibility of a leak. He said the utility was ill-prepared, and he said the company should have been keeping records of radiation levels near the tanks on a regular basis. TEPCO officials told him they need many more workers to oversee the site. We want officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company to have the courage to admit the limits of their efforts instead of simply repeating that they are doing their best. They should speak up about what they need. Fuketa says TEPCO officials should voice any other concerns they may have about funding their operations. TEPCO workers will also start removing soil soaked with radioactive water. Company officials said earlier this week that 300 tons of highly radioactive wastewater had leaked from a storage tank. TEPCO engineers say the water may have soaked into the ground near the tank and some may have flowed through a drainage system into the ocean. Workers plan to excavate about 50 centimeters of soil and measure its radiation level. If the level is high, they'll keep digging until they reach uncontaminated soil. But engineers said they're not sure how much water has seeped into the ground or where it may have gone. They said the presence of underground cables may hamper excavation efforts. TEPCO officials said workers will begin digging in locations where no cables are buried but they said they don't know how much soil they'll be able to remove. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi power plant is struggling to stop radioactive water from leaking into the sea. Tokyo Electric Power Company has started pumping out highly contaminated water built up inside an underground tunnel. The tunnel is about 60 meters from the sea, near a building housing the number two reactor turbine. TEPCO estimates the tunnel contains 210 tons of contaminated water. After the water is pumped out, it will be filtered to lower radiation levels. It will then be stored inside steel tanks. TEPCO has known about the tunnel water since immediately after the nuclear accident in March 2011. Representatives say they only recently realized the water is leaking. TEPCO must also pump out an estimated 15,000 tons of highly radioactive wastewater from all underground tunnels. But the utility doesn't know when the work can be completed. Workers at Japan's crippled nuclear plant are getting ready to dig deeper into a worrying mystery. Radioactive water has leaked from at least one storage tank on the Fukushima Daiichi site. So crews are preparing to investigate how it got out and how far it spread. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company said earlier this week that about 300 tons of highly radioactive water had leaked from a tank. They fear the water flowed through a ditch and into the ocean. The tank is made of steel plates bolted together rather than welded. Workers checked the joints and surfaces visually and found no abnormalities. They don't know how the water got out. Company officials suggest the water leaked from the bottom of the tank, soaked into the soil and mixed with groundwater. Crews plan to dig holes next week around the tank and a nearby ditch. Then they'll analyze the soil and groundwater. 
They hope to trace the path the water took and figure out how far it spread. Company officials said Thursday that crews had also inspected similar tanks holding radioactive water. They said the findings showed two of those tanks may have leaked. TEPCO officials say they've known for more than two years that the tank that leaked radioactive water was standing on shaky ground. They say in a test carried out in July 2011, the tank sank 20 centimeters. They're now looking into whether that had anything to do with the latest leak. The officials say the tank may have become deformed or damaged when it sank. They say a contractor had confirmed that there were no problems with it. After that, TEPCO workers disassembled the tank and reassembled it at the current site. The officials say there are two other tanks that also sank during tests. No radioactive water has been found leaking from them, but workers still transfer, will still transfer the contaminated water to different tanks as a precautionary measure. A top official from the company that runs the Fukushima nuclear power plant has said he's sorry for the latest leak of radioactive water. Earlier this week, it was discovered that about 300 tons of highly toxic waste had leaked from a storage tank. The operator fears the water has flowed down a ditch and into the ocean. Tokyo Electric Power Company views this problem as critical and urgent. We are giving it our top priority. We promise we will do our best to deal with it. Zengo Aizawa met with Vice Governor of Fukushima Prefecture Masao Uchibori. Aizawa is a TEPCO Executive Vice President and heads the company's nuclear power division. Uchibori asked why TEPCO workers had failed to notice the large-scale leak, which he pointed out was the result of human error. Aizawa responded saying a barrier surrounding the tanks failed to stop the water from escaping. It turns out the valve on a pipe connected to the barrier had been left open to drain away rainwater. As a result, the toxic water flowed out and seeped underground. Aizawa admitted the valve should have been shut and promised it will never be left open again. Aizawa also said the company will ensure its tanks are properly maintained and that they're working on a plan to replace the tanks holding the contaminated water.